In this tutorial, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to cover radio buttons, but I'm going to introduce the scene builder and how the scene builder can greatly simplify our lives in doing a lot of tasks, including creating radio buttons and assigning them to toggle groups. So we're going to, we're going to look at that, and then I'm going to show you the code behind in creating toggle groups in the FXML, as well as how you would do that in the actual controller code in Java if you wanted to do that. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're starting with today is a blank uh, user interface that we have a VBox set up in here. And today I'm going to show you the um, scene builder that uh, is made by Gluon. If you are still using the Oracle NetBeans uh, integrated scene builder, I highly recommend you go ahead and upgrade to, to the Gluon product. Uh, if you have trouble figuring out how to do that and get it hooked up to your IDEs, we do have another tutorial uh, walking you through that process. So, But this is what we have today. And what I'm going to show you how to do is how to just create some radio buttons and hook them up to a uh, toggle group so that they will behave um, as radio buttons should, which is when you select one, um, the others will be deselected. And you can see this is... What, what I'm, what's happening here right now is part of why I like um, to go ahead and do a lot of things in the FXML behind because, it, you know, getting everything just selected just 100% correctly here in Scene Builder is sometimes frustrating. But um, for this tutorial, it does make it really easy to show you how toggle um, groups work. So we have three radio buttons now. I'm going to do radio one. And then we'll just give them all some names. So then we'll make this one uh, Radio 2. And we'll make this one uh, Radio 3. Okay, so now they all have names. I'm just going to select one. I'll select the first one. And I'm going to go in here into the Properties section under Toggle Group. We don't have a toggle group defined yet, but it'll create one for us. So this, we'll just name this one Group 1. And so this will actually create a toggle group. And now when we do this drop down, you see group one appears. So we can grab that. And similarly for uh, radio three. So now these are all assigned to the same toggle group. And we'll save this. Uh, we'll save it. And then we will go over here to the IntelliJ. And I want to show you in the FXML what's happening here. Here we have radio one. And it has created a toggle group with an FX ID of group one, and it has set the other radio buttons toggle group to that same uh, group so that all of these will be linked to each other. And let's show you what happens when you run this code. So here we have radio one is now selected, radio two and three, and when you select one, the others are deselected uh, just as you would expect. Now, one thing I do want to point out, these are toggle groups, so we could just as easily call these toggle buttons. And now when I run this, everything will behave the same, except visually there will be toggle buttons instead of radio buttons. So here, now you see when I select one, the others are uh, deselected. And we could, um, in, in, an, in a future tutorial, we're going to go over CSS styling and you can really make this visually apparent what's happening here with the selection of the different uh, radio buttons. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how to create these toggle groups actually in the controller code. Um, so as you can see, I've given each of my radio buttons a name, uh, radio one, radio two, and radio three. This is so that we can access them in the controller. And I'm sure you guys who have been with me for a while know what's coming up next. So we need to have the radio buttons, radio 1, and we'll just copy this. So we'll say radio 2 and radio 3. And now we need a toggle group. So toggle group, and we'll just call it group 1. And we need to initialize that, of course. So we'll get a new toggle group. And we need to assign each of these radio buttons um, to the set toggle group, so we'll set them to group 1, and obviously we need to do that for each radio so that they will all be linked together. And let me show you that this does in fact look like 
um, the same behavior we had uh, a moment ago. So here we have our radio buttons again, and this time we've assigned the toggle grouping in the control code. So it's really up to you um, how you want to do it, but that is how you will work with radio buttons and toggle groups.